Hi, now I want to share with you my work. All the codes can be found on this website on GitHub, so you can access it from here. Um, let's go through the code. I, I package it in such a way that it is re reusable and also reproducible. All the notebooks are here, where for assignment one and assignment two are here, so it's easy to reproduce. So I package it in this package called Meditorch. So let's explore this. Yeah. So the data set for assignment two that I'm working on is uh, this DSB 2018, which stands for Data Science Bowl for year 2018. I choose this data set because it is interesting. Uh, it is about the segmentation of nuclear cells in microscopic images to understand the cell by quickly identifying the cell can help to unlock cure faster so it's quite important so that's why data science board also produce uh, this competition to encourage people to explore to come up with techniques that is good yeah existing uh biomedical analysis tool do exist but they have this issue that for each experiment type or each recordings uh, you have to reconfigure for each experiment so having a method that is uh, reusable is very desirable for clinical where it can extract from various light condition as well as multiple nucleus type without adjusting the segmentation parameters. So that can help a lot in the clinical side. So this is the data set I use. Uh, it is in this file where it extract and it transform into a, a tensor that i can use for machine learning yeah so the next part to talk about is uh, in the neural network segmentation models so uh the first one of course we talk about is unit how can we do biomedical images segmentation without unit so that is our default go-to when we think about segmentation uh, biomedical images so unit we don't explain too much it's uh, basically encoder and decoder where the output is a uh, segmentation mask yeah um, it's very popular and because of the success in unit there are multiple adaptations to unit so the first one that I, i'm using here is attention unit so they include attention into unit and in their studies they show that attention unit outperform unit uh, quite a bit on their medical images yeah nested unit Nested unit, the selling point is these dense skip connections that helps to um, make feature map more similar between the encoder and decoder so that the learning is easier. Yeah, it can converge faster or easier and thus having better performance. Yeah, so this is the third unit like architecture that I'm exploring here. Yeah. And then the fourth one is the famous Deep Lab. Deep Lab is very good performance in natural images. Yeah, it has a ESPP. It's able to extract features from multiple resolution and thus it has very good performance in a natural image where if, even if the human is small or big, it's able to capture and uh, do a very fine segmentation so we want to see whether this aspp can help in uh, medical images as well so this is the fourth architecture we want to talk about so here we have uh, two more architecture group uh, most networks manage to outperform existing methods because they apply transfer learning so because they utilize the features learned from a huge data set uh, that usually outperform from training from a small data set, which is very often in a medical image because of the lack of data. So uh, we want to apply transfer learning here to add, learn from image net where we learn edges, shapes, corner, and all these uh, features that we can reuse. So we want to see whether VGG, yeah, this, so this is VGG, there's uh, VGG 11 and VGG 16. Yeah, uh, we will use this VGG as an encoder for feature extraction. 
and then we will link it up with the decoder on the UNET side for producing the segmentation marks. So the front part is using VGG as the encoder for future extraction. And then the last one is ResNet. Before ResNet, the popular one is, like I say, VGG and LXNet, all this. But they have this issue when you add more layers to a network where there is a vanquishing or exploding gradient. So ResNet in 2015 was introduced where they have this uh, skip connection. And because of that, they are able to outperform all existing method uh, before ResNet um, and go really very, very deep. And hundred and even thousands of layers. So we want to use a uh, ResNet pre-trained on ImageNet. Whether uh, ResNet 34, we are using that, and also ResNet 101, meaning uh, 34 layers and 101 layers, as the encoder for future extraction. Uh, does this uh, helps in our medical image extraction? Yeah. So these are the models. Uh, again, UNET, attention, UNET, nested UNET, uh, Deep Lab with the one with ASPP, and then four more networks over here, ResNet 34, ResNet 101, and VGG 11 and VGG 16. Yeah, so we want to compare all these uh, models. Yeah, but let's talk about is uh, evaluation. Without evaluation, we, we cannot measure, right? So these are the matrix. Mostly we want to compare the IOU intercept over union. It's a bit like accuracy per, per se. Yeah. So this can help us check our segmentation performance in accuracy. And then another one that's uh, quite uh, commonly used is also dice coefficient. So dice loss functions over here. So this is a bit like a F1. So this is like precision and this is a F1, F1 metric. Yeah, which is usually we want to compare this to. Uh, um, for the training protocol, I have this uh, trainer class, which make sure that I don't have a uh, box per se. So I can reuse this for multiple experiment to basically it's like a training loop uh, to measure loss, to back prop and everything like that. So this is a very important file for training. So trainer.py. Yeah. Iterate over 100 iteration with a mini batch of 16 because of a limit in the GPU size. Yeah. So 16 is our batch size. We use the Adam, Adam um, optimizer, which is over here. And then we use a LR scheduler, step LR when the the loss did not improve then we will reduce the learning rate by tenfold yeah and then we also added a l2 penalty to reduce overfitting so it's over here and then uh, we also our loss function is this calculate loss which basically uses both binary cross entropy with um dice loss so it's a combination of these two for our loss function. So now let's look at the, the training protocol again. Uh, so here we load everything that I just show you just now. All the models are over here and the data set is over here. So it's easy to use. Uh, the trainer loop is over here. So that I, I split the data set into three folder. So one for train, one for validation, and one for test. Again, the batch size 16, we do a 0.5 for L2. Uh, the starting learning rate is a uh, negative four, to a power of negative four. Um, patient is five. So if uh, five non uh never improve, then I will reduce the factor by 10, the learning rate by 10. Uh, number of epoch is 100. Yep. So I split. I load the data set into three set as you can see here uh, 520 for train 100 for validation and 50 for test yeah and here you can see this uh, there are 30 seat numbers over here because um, of the stochastic nature of uh, machine learning 
the performance can be affected by the randomness in the data shuffling, in the weights initialization, and the, in the GPU, even the hardware. So to facilitate better comparison, we will train and validate and test with this uh, 30 random selected seat number. And the performance of the particular method is an average of all the seat number. Yeah, of so it's an average of average performance. Uh. So it won't be affected by the randomness kind of the set. Yeah. So this uh this for loop we for each seat and then we will set the seat to make sure uh they are all consistent. Then we will load into the data loader to shuffle only the train set and we'll train unit attention nested all these methods. And then their result will be put into this uh, array, this bunch of arrays here. Yeah. So here I will get all my um accurate uh my I I O U like inter in, uh intersect over unit. So you it, it takes a long time to run. You can see like this running seat one, and then uh, this unit we, we can see some loss curve, and then this attention it runs. So it basically took like um about three days I think it took a while to run so I'm just scrolling down and there's nothing to see here and then and I got the results from the list of array just now you see so these are the results uh, of course we are not looking at this and then um, I print out and make an average so this is a unit for BCE uh, the average BCE is over here, mean BCE and max BCE. So we do the same for dice, dice average, dice mean and dice max and also IOU. So at the end, I get uh, the average of all th uh, 30 runs of because of 30 different seat number. So these are the, the matrix, the result. Of course, uh, it's very hard to read from here. So let's go to the table form. So these are the eight models again. As you can see, um, this is the parameter size, how big the model is. The bigger it is, usually it is slower to train and also it takes up more memory. And then here's the IOU of uh, 30 runs, the average of 30 runs on the test set, the unseen test set. So overall, you can see that the unit based models are performing better than deep lab. Uh, and the other VGG, in fact, the VGG is quite close, VG16 is quite close, but the rest is uh, not as good as a uh, UNET. Uh, of course, we uh, this is not very surprising because UNET is meant for biomedical images, for cementing uh, biomedical images. So having good performance and good training time, uh, this is good news for UNET. And you can see they are all very close for the true UNET. They are all at 88%. Um, the best performing one is the unit, the classic unit. Yeah, uh, for unit plus plus, even though with the extra two million parameters, it did not do as well. So because of that, it's actually slower to train as well. Uh, it is about almost double the time it takes to train. So you have to really consider whether is uh ramping up two million pa more parameters worth it. So generally, if even if it's like slightly better than UNET, it may not be worth it as well. Yeah. Um, for Deep Lab, you can see is uh despite of having ASPP uh, multiple resolution uh for multi scale context extraction, um this uh parallel interest convolution did not help in cementing biomedical images because uh is meant for natural images so that's why it's just not meant for biomedical images yeah uh, for vgg surprisingly vg16 outperformed so much compared to vg11 uh, i'm assuming they'll be closer than that but uh, not too sure why but nevertheless they all lose out to um, unit uh, because they are all pre-trained by imagenet model so because it's ImageNet pre-trained, so maybe that's why uh, it is meant for ImageNet uh, cementation. But I also ran without pre-trained. 
So meaning I use the network architecture and train from scratch. In fact, it performed worse than this. So the, the complication of uh, this model just a bit more not suitable for biomedical images. So it did not help at all, uh, even with or without the pre-trained image net. Yeah. So this is it. Uh, once again, you can check out my work on this uh, GitHub page, Meditosh. And yeah, thank you for your attention.